both YouTube and Zoom are live right now. Um, you can start when you're ready, but I see Kathy Pucci is having some trouble getting in. Okay, we'll go ahead and start. Um, and then um, we'll we kind of wait a second once we uh, um, start the meeting. So, sure. all right, I'd like to call the uh, finance committee meeting to order. Mary Jo, can you please call the roll? Ron Van Kirk. Here. Kathy Pucci. Uh, she is trying to join us. She should be in here shortly. Mm -hmm. And Andy Selhurst. Here. Okay. And uh, we'll just wait maybe 30 seconds or so. And if she can't get in, then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and start without her. But I would anticipate she should be able to get in. Okay, maybe not. We'll just we'll go ahead and, and move forward. And when she joins us, uh, Mary Jo, if you could just let us know, and we'll and we'll go I from will. there. All right, thank you. All right, the first item on our agenda this evening is the approval of minutes uh, from the April twenty sixth uh, finance committee meeting. Are there any comments or questions on that? No. All right. Make a motion that we approve. Second. To approve the minutes, Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Um, Kathy Pucci, I'll wait, and Andy Selhurst. Yes. Okay, uh, the first item on the agenda this evening is a resolution 2021-16. And this is the resolution to contract with McBride to Clarion for uh, the zoning code rewrite. And that is at a cost of $94,000. Uh, we did have them with us a couple of meetings ago to explain this. Um, everyone seemed to be on board then. Uh, Andy, any comments or questions regarding this? All good. Okay, I'll make a recommendation that council adopt then. Second. To recommend council adopt Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. All right, the next up is resolution 2021-17. And uh, this is the authorized the mayor to enter into a pass-through and sale purchase agreement uh, for parcel number 43117116. And this is a real uh, small uh, portion of property uh, located on Apple Creek Drive. It's basically, you can't do anything with it but it would be part of a potential trail in the future. And we had a discussion about this at the last meeting as well. Um, any comments or questions regarding this? None. Okay. And that is on second reading. The next is resolution 2021-18. And this is uh, authorize the mayor to enter into a community recreation uh, conservation project pass through agreement with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Um, again, in regards to uh, this property uh, any, uh, oh, I think that might be her. She's coming. All right. Any comments or questions on this as well? I'm good. Okay. All right. And that's on second reading. Uh, under new business this evening, the first item is resolution 2021-19. Hello, Kathy. Hi, I'm here. Okay. All right. That's okay. Um, Did you have any, we already voted on the minutes, but did you have any comments or questions on the minutes from the last no. meeting? Thank you. Okay. No. And then we've already discussed um, the business from the last meeting, resolution 2021, 16, uh, 17, and 18. Did you have any questions on those? That's the uh, for the zoning and then the two um, for the land there on the uh, Apple Creek Drive. Okay. All right. Very good. And then we'll hold off on 2021, 14, and we'll, we'll do that in committee of the whole. All right. Next up then is resolution 2021-19. And uh, sister ordinance to that resolution 21, 2021-20. And this is for the resurfacing of Brook Park Road from the West Corporation line near Chevy to Ridge Road. And that's the Brooklyn half, of course. That's 19. And then 20 is um, the uh, agreement with the four cities for the resurfacing of Brook Park Road from West 130th to the I-480 eastbound ramps. And... Um, the um, resolution discusses how the cost sharing will go, uh, but we anticipate um, applying for and receiving federal funding, at least that's the plan uh, for that. Uh, we do need to pass this by suspension of the rules this evening if council agrees, uh, just as a timing issue to get the ball rolling on this. Um, Mayor or Kevin, is there anything additionally you would need to add to this or whoever else wants to add anything on this or is that about cover it?
I guess their silence speaks volumes. No, no, sorry. I was trying to get to my mute button. I would just okay. say that, um, you know, we typically don't have strong DOPWIC applications, but uh, given the fact that this is with multiple cities and we haven't had it for so long, uh, that it's a very high likelihood we'll have a good chance of securing the DOPWIC money to pay for our portion of Brook Park Road along with the other communities. Um, as you could see, Brooklyn Heights is the lead applicant and they too have, it's been a long time since they've received DOPWIC money. It's really hard for our smaller communities uh, to score high in those applications. So um, this, this seems like a good project where we're all working in tandem. So we're very hopeful to cover that portion. All right, very good. All right, any comments or questions from the committee? All right, I'll make the recommendation then that council adopt by suspension of the rules this evening. Second. This is for, the first one. The for first 19? One. For 2020, 2021-19, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, to recommend council adopt by suspension, Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Andy Selhurst. Yes. All right, then resolution 2021-20. Um, I will make a recommendation that council also adopt by suspension of the rules. Second. To recommend council adopt by suspension. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Andy Selhurst. Yes. All right. And that is all uh, I have for finance. Mr. Raguse uh, did send us out an email today uh, on that. Mr. Raguse, did you want to add anything now or did you want to wait until the council meeting? Sorry, I, I was okay. trying to get to my mute button, just like the mayor was. Um, I do have a, I do have a couple of things to um, add on to my uh, to my email. So I do have a piece of legislation on the agenda for first reading as far as codification of the audit committee. I don't know if there was any questions on that as far as formal codification. I was actually going to discuss that in committee of the whole, so okay. all of council have a chance to discuss that. Okay, very well. And then um, our notes, our bond anticipation notes are being sold tomorrow. So I had a call with our uh, municipal advisor and our underwriter in Key Bank. Um, so our notes are expected to price at 0.18%. So that's 0.18% of net interest we're expected to pay on these notes. Uh, for comparison purposes, our current notes that we have, we're paying 1.15%. So you see a, a, a difference of almost one full percent within the past year between May of 2020 and to May of 2021. So that's I'm um, really saying where we're at as far as interest rate environment is concerned. That's also the lowest point it's been um, in recent history, taking into account the Great Recession peak of 2009 and 2010. So interest rates are, are really low right now. So that difference of almost 1% results in a net savings of approximately $26,000 on these notes, which is pretty substantial for a note of $2.7 million. So, I will uh, give you, I will update you all as I have in the past as far as our debt um, policy is concerned, as far as post pricing analysis, as far as how we did compared to other notes that have sold um, within the same time period. Thanks, Tom. Just just one question, not necessarily on that, but on uh, the upcoming meetings where we'll be financing the, the um, City Hall project. Uh, do you anticipate the same? Okay. Do you anticipate the interest rates being about the same for that as well? Yes, good point. Uh, on our call with Key Bank, they expect these rates to go well into the summer at this level. So I, I do expect uh, very low rates when we are ready to issue the debt later this summer. All right, very good. Thank you so much. And are there any other questions from my email as far as the budget schedule is concerned or anything like that? I do not. Uh, anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right, that's all that I have for finance. Mayor, did you have anything else you needed to add uh, for the finance committee? No, I do not. Thank you. Sure. All right, uh, anyone else on the committee? All good. No. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. adjourn. Second. Second. To adjourn, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. All right. Mary J, you still good? I am. Okay, then I will go oh, ahead and- You know what? I, I'm so sorry. I, I did have something I wanted to bring up. Is that a okay, problem? Okay, we'll bring it up. We'll bring it up in committee of the whole. As soon as okay. we, as soon as we jump on with that. Okay, I, I apologize. No I just problem. Down at my notes. Thank you.
Yeah, no problem. All right, let's go ahead and call the committee of the whole uh, meeting to order. Mary Jo, can you call the roll, please? Sue Grodick. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Meg Ryan Shockey. Andy Selhurts. Here. Kathy Pucci. Here. Mary Bell Beer. Here. Kevin Tansky. Here. Ish Ish is um. Oh, there she is. Meg, are you good? I'm good. Yeah, I forgot my camera okay. wasn't on. Thanks. <laughs> oh no problem. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Mrs. Pucci. What did you have a question on? Um, just a couple really fast things. Um, first of all, um. I Hopefully everybody read the information on the judge's ruling regarding the municipal income tax for remote workers. And I, I understand it's gonna be appealed and everything, but I was just wondering if we have been in touch with our businesses recently, I guess specifically Key Bank, because from what I'm hearing, most businesses are laying out their plans for what they're gonna do uh, moving forward relating to you know, who's going to be working remote, you know, who, who are they going to bring back? And they at least are working on timelines now. So I was wondering if we've heard anything specifically from Key Bank. We did, uh, we had a discussion with some folks at Key Bank last week. Um, they do intend to come back to the office, but uh, as I explained prior uh, to the pandemic even happening, they have give their employees a lot of flexibility and they're going to provide that flexibility going forward with probably adding one more day. How that pans out for us, uh, we're still trying to figure out, but I, I think it's um, good news. We heard what Jeremy already said to the rest of you that, you know, this is an owned property. So as they consolidate, they'll consolidate in this location uh, likely. Uh, nothing definitive other than, you know, there is plans to slowly start bringing back employees uh, over the course of this summer and the fall. Um, we also had a conversation with Inigen, um, same type of scenario, uh, Medical Mutual, same scenario. So I, I think businesses are, are slowly <clears throat> bringing back employees but also understanding that what just happened also uh, brought this world of providing some flexibility to their employees as a selling point, point to keeping them there. Um, but there's also the flip side as they recruit new people, um, they're trying to make sure that they have that kind of office environment, the culture. So they're trying to find this kind of middle point to everything. So as things have changed, they're trying to navigate this new world. So we're just going to um, kind of wait and see approach and keep an eye on uh, what keeps going on down in Columbus. Jeremy, did you want to add anything? No, I think he, he said it pretty well. Okay, thank you for the update. And I just had one other thing that I just wanted to throw out there, not really for discussion tonight, but for people to start thinking about. Um, and that is something that's really been on our back burner um, for a while. And I'd like to see us um, figure out how we're gonna move forward on it. And that is um, taking a look at the level of spending without authorization from council. And just a little reminder, this came to light when Mr. Ragu started and in the charter, it says that we're gonna follow the state code with respect to um, financial issues, even though when it came to spending, that was really not what our practice had um, really ever been for decades. And um, I, I just was thinking that maybe um, people could give some thought to you know, levels of spending that they would think is appropriate because right now we've defaulted to the state level, which is $50,000. And I know, you know, there was discussion at the time when this was brought to light, um, you know, that that is a pretty high level for a city our size. And the only solution is going to be to put something on the ballot, but maybe if everybody could give some thought to, you know, what their opinions are, and maybe we could make some time to discuss it either at the next finance committee meeting or maybe the committee of the whole. And those were the two issues I had. Thank you. Sure. And yeah, Kathy, I'd be happy to discuss that. If you could shoot me an email, 
uh, re reminded me, and I'll put that on the docket of the next finance committee meeting for sure. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, sure. Okay, we'll go ahead and get into our legislation uh, for tonight then. Uh, the first item we have is resolution 2021-15, and this is uh, authorize the mayor to enter the mutual aid agreement with the Metro Parks Police Department. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. Are there any comments or questions on this? All right, I'll make a recommendation that council adopt. Second. Sure. To recommend that council adopt, Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhertz? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Bell Bear? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. All right, I'm gonna kind of jump out of order uh, to give extra time to the other, the last two that we have here um, in a second. So we're gonna jump to ordinance 2021-16. And uh, this is on first reading, but hope to pass by suspension of the rules. This is approving the 2021 replacement pages uh, to the codified orders of the city of Brooklyn. Um, were there any comments or questions uh, regarding this ordinance? Move to recommend emergency adoption. Okay. To recommend council adopt by emergency, Sue Grodick. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey. Yes. Andy Selhertz. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Belvere. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Okay, ordinance 2021-14. This is repealing and amending various sections of the city's ordinances to conform with the city's code and updating different classifications uh, in the collective bargaining agreements. Um, we had some discussion about this at the last meeting. And then er a little bit earlier this afternoon, Mr. Butler sent out a, um, substitute version of the uh, proposed ordinance. Obviously it was sent out at 5.30, so no early on council has had, has had a chance to, to read over this. Um, but Mr. Butler, did you want to um, discuss this at all at this time? Thank you, Mr. Chair, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great, thanks. Um, yeah, th there's no rush on adopting the ordinance. Uh, I do regret sending this to you as close to this meeting as I did, but um, Suffice it to say, nothing must happen tonight. Um, I sent out a version that reflects uh, a few changes from the original version that is on tonight's uh, public docket. And I did upload the substitute version to board docs so that members of the public uh, are able to take a look at it as well. The substitute versions changes from the original are highlighted in yellow uh, in the version that I sent out today. And there are just four substantive changes uh, from the original version. Section four of the original version had dealt with a section of the codified ordinances that dealt with police personnel and the number of um, uh, members of the police department, including sergeants and lieutenants. You had uh, very recently updated that section uh, to provide for the addition of lieutenants to the department and also to take out some gender specific language in that section. Um, I had initially put this in the version of the codified, uh, or, excuse me, the legislation uh, because I didn't think it was necessary in light of the fact that we had a union contract a, and a, uh, a class plan that dealt with these positions. However, the union contract and class plans, as I later came to realize, and Councilwoman Pucci um, uh, is the one who got me thinking along these lines, uh, though, those additional pieces of legislation approving of the union contract and the class plan did not provide for the caps on the number of personnel that this ordinance provided for. And so it's my feeling as if the ordinance should stay on the books and not be repealed. You'll see the elimination of um, that section four uh, in highlighting in this version that's before you tonight. Additionally, the position of fire safety inspector I was going to eliminate, um, it provides for an annual stipend, which is outdated now in light of the union contracts that have been approved. Um, and it also uh, creates three fire safety positions uh, in the department. I uh, uh, thought it wise not to eliminate that uh, uh, three position language, but instead to make it a cap of three positions. And so you'll see that change as the second of four changes in 
this legislation. The third and the fourth changes uh, are really rather minor. Uh, Councilwoman Pucci asked the question why we would uh, make folks register for grass cutting services in 959.01. That was section 15, now section 14 uh, of the legislation. And I don't believe we are requiring that. I I haven't fully confirmed that with uh, Karen Frado, but uh, it's worth checking into that, I think, before we would pass this. In any event, I've eliminated the $15 annual registration, as you'll see in yellow highlighting um, in that section. And then finally, um, in what was section 16, now section 15 of the legislation, um, I believe the fee for uh, snow removal is not $10. I think Councilwoman Puji indicated it's $40. Now, again, that needs to be verified. I need to verify that. But um, I made that change in 959.02. Those are the only changes uh, from the original version. I think if anything happens tonight, uh, after I answer any of your questions, and if you're satisfied with this version, the only thing I would uh, think would be appropriate would that be uh, you suspend the rules, excuse me, substitute, not suspend the rules, substitute this version for the original, and then we'll leave it up uh, on the council agenda for another meeting, maybe two, if you'd like, uh, to give the public adequate time to take a look at it, uh, ask any questions, and then adopt it at that point. Uh, that's my thought, and I'd be glad to answer any questions on it right now. Mr. Van Kirk, can I be uh, recognized, please? Yes, go ahead. Uh, you know, I have an issue, and unfortunately, the uh, fire chief is not here, but no more than three uh, positions as the fire safety inspector. Right now, all of our lieutenants act as that, so I, I think we have to be careful with that language. I realize, you know, when we're talking about three that receive the stipend, uh, but we have multiple fire safety inspectors in our lieutenants, so... That is yeah. language we'd have to discuss with the fire chief. That makes sense. So if this, yeah, so if this uh, provision is really meant to limit the number of people who are paid in that way, then I think we need to be pretty careful about the language of it. Um, and if it's if it's meant to be a cap on the people who act in that role, then obviously, as the mayor suggests, um, we need to account for the people who are in other positions who act as fire safety inspectors. That's a that's a good point. May I be recognized? Yes. Um, just so everyone has a, a clear understanding of um, how this came about, and I thank Mr. Butler for working on this. Um, per the charter, council is the one or the body who establishes um, positions and numbers of employees and their pay. So my question was, um, you know, why would we be eliminating um, those couple provisions? The, in, the intent of the fire safety inspector um, w- was in the past how many people were being paid. I understand that um, lieutenants can act in that capacity, but it was, was a limit. And I personally, you know, if, if we need more of them, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it's just, I think it's good to, to keep the limits because that is under council's purview on how many positions, how much they're paid, et cetera. And um, I did mention to um, Mr. Butler, we actually did have a situation where um, there was a situation quite a, quite a while ago with the police department, um, basically having too many officers than what was provided for in the existing ordinance. So I just didn't think it was a good idea for us to totally eliminate what comes under council's purview. And as far as the grass cutting, um, my question wasn't the um, the fee, it's we're not providing that service to our residents. So I was just wondering, should we take that out of the, um, the legislation because we're not providing, I know you corrected the title for the senior services coordinator or senior center coordinator, 
but we're not providing that service at this time. So I just think it's something we have to think about whether we're gonna keep it or not. Thank you. Yeah, my thought certainly is if we're not providing a service, there's no reason to have it ordained. So it may make more sense just to eliminate the uh, section altogether. All right, any other comments or questions? All right, uh, Kevin, my recommendation would, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead, who was it? No, go ahead. Um, my recommendation would be, Kevin, because there's still a couple of items that we're not 100% sure of and um, we want to clarify. My recommendation would be to, to go ahead and take the next uh, couple of weeks before our next meeting to go ahead and clean uh, clean up any any questions and such. And then at that meeting, we can read those, we can amend it, read them into the, into the um, in the meeting, read it into the ordinance, and then it can go for one more meeting. And then we can pass it the next time if, if the rest of council is okay with that. I, I just, what I don't want to do is read everything into the record and then come back next time and have to do it again because we made, you know, a change from $40 to $30 or whatever it may be. So that, that would be my recommendation. Sense. And I was going to make a motion that we recommend uh, holding it in abeyance until our next regularly scheduled council meeting. Okay. Yep. Yep. We can make the right. Yeah. We can just make that recommendation when we get to the uh, council meeting. That's just fine. That'd be great. All right. Um, so forgive me if I don't understand this 100%. So, Mayor, you're, when you're talking about the safety inspector, um, so what, what this is supposed to say is that three, no more than three people will be paid for doing this position. And you're saying there's more than three people that do it? You know, I just got this updated legislation from Kevin right before the meeting. Um, I'm going off of what he's saying verbally. So um, I'm just telling you how it's actually performed right now. Okay. All right. Well, that'd be another thing we can clarify whenever we, yeah, but no hurry. Okay. Mr. Well, Mr. Chair, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Chair if, I, if I could just clarify one thing and the mayor's correct. She, she like you got this just before the meeting. Um, the, there are, uh, there are supervisors within the fire department who are trained as fire safety inspectors and can do that work. There are regular firefighters who are trained as fire safety inspectors who are not supervisors who get paid extra to be fire safety inspectors. The supervisors do not get paid extra because they're already getting paid more as supervisors. Um, so the mayor is absolutely correct in saying that um, there are fire safety inspectors who don't have that title and don't get paid as fire safety inspectors. I think we're all on the same page on this. It, it, we, we probably stand to clarify that section of the code to make sure that we're not, um, we're placing a cap on the number of people who can do the job. If right. anything, we'd be placing a cap just on the number of people who, act, who own that title. Okay. That makes sense. It does, it does. All right, very good. Um, we'll go ahead and move off here because we've got a couple other items that we need to discuss, but if anyone has any additional comments, please uh, feel free to email Mr. Butler and then we'll, uh, we'll go through that again at the next meeting. All right, thank you, appreciate that. All right, next up is uh, or Ordinance 2021-15, and this is in regards to the Audit Committee uh, and uh, the provide legislation for creating this committee. So Mr. Butler, or not Mr. Butler, Mr. Raguse, if you wanted to go ahead and discuss that at this time. Sorry, that's two for two now. So this, this goes in line with um, our prior ordinances codifying some of our prior ordinances related to the debt management policy, to the investment policy, petty cash funds. Through, through conversation with the, with the law director, um, it came, we came to a realization that we have not codified this committee where we have our other committees. So we're taking the proper steps, proper steps to codify this committee. Um, with the first reading tonight, there, has, there is one change, which I noted in my email, from the prior ordinance that established the committee to this codification, and that change has to do with the frequency of meetings. So, and the um, and the last part of section one, um, you'll notice that the committee just states that the committee shall meet upon the request of the director of finance or chairperson of the council finance committee. Right now, the um, the ordinance states that it shall meet quarterly. We believe that this gives us flexibility to schedule meetings on an as needed basis instead of just to schedule a meeting because we have to schedule a meeting on a quarterly basis. So this gives um, the 
me or the chairperson of the finance committee um, the proper protocol to do so on an as needed basis. Okay. All right. Anyone else, anyone on the committee have any questions for that? May I be recognized? Yes. So um, I have no problem with the change at all because clearly we have not been meeting quarterly, but this was recommended by the auditor because for quite some time, the audit committee did not meet. It was inactive for a very long time. And this was one of the auditor's suggestions that they wanted to see it uh, brought back and, and utilized. And they were the ones who suggested quarterly. I guess I would just suggest that if we're gonna have the committee that we have a meeting at, at some point when there's a need for it, um, but I would think at least once a year, we should be meeting. Do you have any thoughts on that, Mr. Raguz? I completely agree. Um, generally the meetings are structured around the audit. So we definitely, you know, we generally meet, last year was an exception because of COVID, but we generally do have a post audit committee where the audit committee does meet with the auditors and sometimes a pre audit committee. And if we have, um, issues within the audit, as far as comments or deficiencies that are noted, we can meet to address those on an as needed basis. So I, co I completely agree we should at least meet once once a, once a year, and it's my intention to do so. Um, Thank you. No problem. Perhaps, perhaps, Mr. Raguse, you can work with Mr. Butler and just put that in there as well, that the audit okay. committee will meet once a year, and then, you know, and then, or know. upon the request of the Director of Finance of the Council or the Council of Finance Committee. Yep, that'd be fine. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Thank right, you. Any other comments on this one? Okay, two other issues are, are things I want to discuss real quick. The first of all, um, everyone should have received some updated pictures um, that the mayor sent from Bowen regarding the city hall. And so uh, if you haven't seen those, please take a look at those and give the mayor uh, your feedback. We don't really have a lot of time right now uh, to discuss that. Uh, so take a look at those and um, and then give the mayor your feedback. And then lastly, um, that I have, and that was another uh, proposed language that Mr. Butler sent out for uh, online meetings going forward. Uh, he sent an email out, I believe it was the week before last, in regards to uh, coming out of this COVID time when we get back to meeting uh, in person, uh, adding something to our code that allows us to, uh, at certain times, meet uh through this avenue. And so um, he sent out draft language for that. And basically um, it would add this type of meeting to our um, ordinances and based upon home rule. And it would either be called by the presiding officer of the committee or council uh, or a majority of the members of council would call to, to do this type of uh, meeting. Um, it would be have to be for an emergency or some type of special circumstances. Uh, I'm not in favor of just doing this all the time, uh, just out of convenience. But I know there are certain times I know that we've had uh, Mary Jo's, you know, had to pull her hair out sometimes, especially during the summertime, trying to put together a special meeting uh, because, you know, we're on vacation or we're out of town and uh, for literally something that takes 30 seconds to do. And so uh, I think for something like that, it would be good uh, to have. Those are just my thoughts. Uh, we have a few minutes here if anyone ha has any comments or questions regarding um, this uh, proposed legislation. And if Mr. Butler, if you want to add something, that's fine as well. I'll only begin by saying it's not yet proposed legislation. It's just proposed language that I've put together. And if uh, <laughs> if it's the will of someone on council to put that into legislative forum, I'd be glad to do, work with Mary Jo to do that and we'll get it on an upcoming agenda. Hey, Ron. Yes, sir don't have any disagreement with it because at least it gives us flexibility for what you know i already responded to mr butler the same way so sometimes when you gotta round everybody up it just makes it easier yeah it, it, i mean technology has obviously changed um since these this legislation was originally introduced zoom was not in, exist, in existence when this legislation was introduced and so um you know obviously in-person meetings are best uh, for our regularly scheduled meetings, but for special circumstances, I, I don't have a problem with it either. May I be recognized? May I be recognized? Um, so I sent an email out to everybody. I think it was sometime last week. Um, I explained that I had contacted Mr. Butler and I, in my opinion, I think we, ha we should have something 
in place just in case. I think if, you know, we really learned last year that anything is possible and um, I appreciate your work on this. And um, Mr. Butler, if you could please draft it up, I'm more than happy to introduce it. Any other comments or questions from anyone regarding this? I was just gonna say, I, I definitely agree with what you said, Ron, especially about special meetings in the summer or even you know, needing to add a meeting uh, in between two already scheduled meetings. It's just sometimes, you know, if you plan a vacation well enough and ahead of time, you go on those off weeks. So it gives us the flexibility to have a quorum or even have everyone join who otherwise wouldn't be able to. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Mr. Butler. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and put that together, we'll uh, perhaps add that for our next meeting. That'd be great. Do. Thank we you. do need to do, if we want to do this, we obviously have to have something done. I think it's June 23rd is whenever um, the current the current law expires. So the emergency law expires. So obviously we want to have that done before then. So, all right. Thanks. That's all that I have uh, for Committee of the Whole. Um, any mayor or any of the directors have anything you need to add? Minutes. Nope. I have, oh, go ahead, Ron, do your minutes. And I have a couple things. I always to... forget that, Mary Joan. You even texted me too to remind me. I know. Me. All, right. <laughs> all right. So um, we'll go ahead and um, discuss the minutes. To approve. For last meeting. Okay. Second. To approve the minutes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurt? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Del Beer? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Thanks. All right, Mayor, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just a few things. Uh, I, the building commissioner job uh, posting had closed. I only received two applications. Uh, this is a conversation for our next Northeast Ohio mayors and managers meeting. Uh, just the lack of building commissioners out there. We are currently using Safe Built as our CBO, and we're going to stick with them a while. What I don't want to happen is just to pick somebody to pick somebody. Um, I think it's important that we have high quality staff working here. And, you know, if I only have two options on the table, um, it doesn't really give me a great look at what's out there. And I, you know, frankly, I don't think the resumes that I received were um, of the highest quality as well. So I am going to wait a little while. Uh, things are uh, being managed okay with safe built. Things are getting done. Uh, we'll see if there's some solutions that are brought up with maybe sharing with another community or looking at other opportunities there. Also, I sent you guys out an email about broadband data. Um, I do have a meeting with the superintendent in the county Thursday. As you could see, there is a void in Brooklyn on the south. Um, there are cities that were identified as part of this look at the county. Brooklyn was one of them. Uh, thankfully, it was just one section of our city. But I want to take advantage of the opportunity of the county wanting to fund uh, broadband and the expansion with this. So um, that's why I reached out to the superintendent, because his particular infrastructure would allow for the community to do that one to one and a half mile outreach um, that we're looking for in the South. Uh, next, you might have saw on social media, we swore in another officer, Frank Sidoti. The chief is also uh, looking to hire another person off the lateral list if possible. It is a long process as well as he's going for another test. We do have retirements that are coming up. So this is gonna be a constant process and we wanna stay ahead of it. Uh, we do have, we're filling the grant um, that we, the COPS grant that we received with Frank Sidoti. So we've uh, completed those numbers and um, we're again, looking at possibly one more off the lateral list and um, starting that new test in the summer, which as you know, takes a long time to get results and then hire or so, uh, staying ahead of everything. And then the last, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy and I met with the County Planning Commission about the Brook Park streetscape. Um, they're currently in the, uh, the conditions um, point of it, the current conditions of Brook Park Road, which a lot of stuff was on Brooklyn because of the flooding and um, zoning and everything like that. So uh, the next step that they're moving forward with is doing a survey to the businesses along that corridor. 
and this should be a process that speeds up hopefully a little bit more over the summer so uh, we get to some of the recommendations um, far in advance from when Brook Park is paved. And that concludes my report. Very good, thank you, Mayor. Anyone else, any other directors? All right, anyone on the committee? All right, I'll make a recommendation that we adjourn. Second. To adjourn, Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhertz? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. All right, we'll come back in about five minutes and start our council meeting.
Okay, it's seven o'clock, so we'll go ahead and call the Brooklyn City Council meeting to order. Mary Jo, can you please call the roll? Sue Grodick. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Meg Ryan Shockey. Here. Andy Selhurts. Here. Kathy Pucci. Here. Mary Belvere. Here. Kevin Tansky. Here. Would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> At this time, I will turn it over to uh, Mrs. Meg Ryan Shockey uh, for her opening. Good evening. Mental Health Awareness Month. According to Mental Health America, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound impact on the mental health of people of all ages. Now more than ever, it is critical to reduce the stigma around mental health struggles because that stigma often prevents individuals from seeking help. I want to dedicate today's moment of silence to everyone who is struggling with mental health and those who are helping their friends and family that are struggling. Know that you are not alone and it is okay to ask for help. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ryan Shockey. Uh, the first item on our agenda this evening is the approval of minutes from our April 26th, 2021 meeting. Are there any comments or questions regarding those minutes? All right, I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. Second. To approve the minutes, Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Kevin? Yes. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll have the public session. Mary Jo, were there any emails sent in for the public session today? I had nothing when I left. Okay, very good, thank you. We'll now move on with reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We'll begin this evening with the Finance Committee. We did meet at 6.15 prior to our council meeting as always, and we discussed the following. Up for a third reading and adoption is resolution 2021-16. This authorizes the mayor to enter into a contract with McBride Dale Clarion for consultancy services related to the studying and drafting provisions of the zoning code following the city's adoption of the master plan. And uh, the committee did recommend that council adopt this. This cost is $94,000. Resolution 2021-17, authorizing the marriage to enter into a pass-through and sale purchase and development agreement with the Cuyahoga County Land Reutilization Corporation for the purchase of um, parcel number 4311716. This is off of Apple Creek Drive. We, again, we talked about this last week, it's a small sliver of property on there that's essentially worthless. Uh, it would be used for any future um, construction of trails that would uh, be in that area. And then resolution 2021-18, authorizing the mayor to enter into community recreation conservation project pass through agreement with the Department of Natural Resources in regards to that previous resolution. Uh, new on the agenda this evening was resolution 2021-19 and assisted ordinance resolution 2021-20. Uh, the first of which is for the resurfacing of Brook Park Road uh, from the West Corporation line near Chevy Boulevard to Ridge Road, and that's the, the half that's in Brooklyn. And then 2021-20, this is authorizing the merit enter into a joint improvement agreement with Brooklyn, Cleveland, Parma, and Brooklyn Heights for the resurfacing of Brook Park Road from West 130 to the I-480 eastbound ramps as part of the ODOT's urban pavement resurfacing program. And the Resolution breaks out the percentage cost that the city of Brooklyn would cost. We are um, applying for federal funding through a grant for this, and we do anticipate receiving those funds. We'll see. Uh, but it sh if that goes through, the, the cost to the city of Brooklyn will uh, not be anything that will be covered by that grant. Uh, and that is all uh, that we had for finance. Again, it takes place at 615 prior to all regularly scheduled council meeting. At this time, we'll move on with the Recreation Board, Councilman Tansky. Thank you. City of Brooklyn has some upcoming free events. 
May 26th, Sandlots, the movie. June 9th, music by the band Flipside. June 23rd, music by the band Fogology. July 7th, the Diamond Project Band. July 21st, Spies in Disguise, the movie. August 11th, Chardon Polka Band. August 25th, Diary, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Long Haul Movie. September 8th, music from Becky Boyd and the Groove Train. Driving movies will be in St. Thomas More parking lot, 7 to 10 p.m., registration required. The concerts will take place at the Grand Pavilion behind the City Hall, 7 to 9 p.m. Please bring your own chairs, blankets, snacks, social, distance, social distancing required. Mask will not be required, must stay within your group. The next recreation board meeting will be held May 17th in the rec center meeting room at 7 p.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tansky. Next up is our legislative update, Councilman Balbier. Mrs. Balbier, you're still muted. Sorry. New legislation has been proposed in Ohio that would impose stricter penalties for debris that comes out of a vehicle and injures others or damages other people's properties on the roadway. The new legislation comes after an investigative reporter, Ron Reagan, with WEWS in Cleveland, was involved in a rollover crash caused by an unsecured mattress that flew off a vehicle and into the roadway. A semi-truck tried to avoid the mattress and clipped Reagan's vehicle. Reagan found that the fines for unsecured loads in Ohio is one of the lowest at $150 and no jail time, a minor misdemeanor. The investigation also found that around 3,000 unsecured loads caused almost 7,000 crashes in the past five years in Ohio. Those crashes also resulted in more than 700 people injured and the deaths of six people. Reagan presented his findings to legislators in Columbus, which resulted in the creation of House Bill 27. This bill would increase the fine for unsecured loads to $500, and it would increase criminal penalties to include a 25,000 fine and 60 days of jail time if a person is injured or their property is damaged by an unsecured load. It is felt that House Bill 27, if passed, would send a message that unsecured loads have consequences that many victims have to live with for years and the increased penalties are justified. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Belbeer. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals will meet on Thursday, May 20th at 6 p.m. in the Brooklyn City Hall Council Chambers to hear the following. A request from Valley College for a variance for a three month for three months for a banner sign approved for six months at 8720 Brook Park Road or Brook Park Avenue. A request from Patty Fagula for a two foot height variance for the height of the fence that is greater than the distance to a residential structure at 4177 Ivy Wood Drive. A request from Bowen for a 25 foot variance for required minimum front yard depth of 50 feet for municipal recreation facilities for a parking lot at 7600 Memphis Avenue. A request from Jeff Flowers for a five foot variance to require parking setback of, a, of five feet on the sideline in a G-B district for a Swenson's drive-in at 7414, general business, 7414 Brook Park Road. And then lastly, a request from uh, McElwee Properties LLC for a variance to the required punish for a lot split and consolidation in a light industrial district, 11,400 Brook Park Road and any other business that may become before the board. Uh, all individuals may attend the Board of Zoning Appeals, have the right to comment either in person, or you may write to the Board of Zoning Appeals and send it to City Hall. Next, we'll move on with our Planning Commission, Councilwoman Grodick. Thank you. First, I'd like to um, thank Mr. Rowan for stepping in to represent the Building Department at our meeting. Uh, we met Thursday, May 6th in person and had quite a lengthy agenda. The first item that we considered was a request from Total Image Solutions for a two canopy mounted digital signs at the gas station 
for the gas station at 4295 Tiedemann Road. That was approved. Um, a request from Blink Signs for a sign package for Red Crab Juicy Seafood at 4754 Ridge Road was approved. Um, a request for a universal sign system for a sign package at GFS um, at 10820 Brook Park Road was approved. That's the, to update their signage. Um, a request for McLee Properties LLC for a lot split and consolidation at 11400 Brook Park Road was approved pending the um, engineer's approval. We had a few questions about it. Uh, there two that were together was a conditional joint use request for a car wash in a retail business district for clean express auto wash at 4630 Ridge Road and a request from Jason Fenton for a preliminary site plan approval for the same business and address, clean, clean Express Auto Wash at 4630 Ridge Road was deferred. Um, we received some last minute changes in their plans and uh, felt we needed to think about it, look it over a little bit closer. So it was deferred to next month. And a request from Jeff Flowers for preliminary site approval for Swenson's Drive-In at 7414 Brook Park Road was approved. And the last one was a request from Bowen for final site approval for the new city center at 8000 Memphis Avenue was approved. Um, the next planning commission meeting will be Wednesday, June 2nd at six o'clock. We're moving it back to Wednesdays. At this time, the plan is that we will be meeting in person in city council chambers. And I would just like to remind everyone that uh, before the meetings, you can check um, the city's website and board docs to not only see the agenda, but also to look closer at the applicants' requests. And uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Grodick. Next up is our school board liaison, Councilman Belbeer. Thank you. It is the school's intention to go back to regular pre-pandemic schedule next school year. They will accommodate remote learning for grades 9 through 12 through their new Brooklyn Digital Learning Academy. Any students in grades K through 8 requesting remote for medical and COVID-19 related reasons will be serviced through a third party platform. For these students in grades K through 8, K through 8 remote learning will look very different. The school will have a new principal at the PK through seven building, Mr. Johnny Bolin, who comes from the Berea City Schools District, and we welcome him. Some of the end of the school year dates are Senior Award Ceremony, May 12th at 6 p.m., Prom, May 28th at 7 p.m., located at the Windows on the River, Graduation, Sunday, June 6th at 2 p.m. at the Brooklyn Stadium, the rain dates are June 7th and June 8th if needed. And lastly, the last day of school for students, Monday, June 7th. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Belbeer. Uh, the Committee of the Whole met following the finance meeting prior to our, our regularly scheduled council meeting to discuss the following. The first item uh, was resolution 2021-15. And this is authorizing the mayor to enter into a mutual agreement with the Cleveland Metro Parks Police Department and the committee uh, unanimously recommended that council adopt. Next, we discussed uh, ordinance 2021-16. This is approving the 2021 replacement pages to the codified ordinances of the city. And uh, that was also my suspension of the rules. That was also uh, unanimously recommended that council adopt. Then we discussed uh, ordinance 2021-14. This is repealing and amending various sections of the codified orders of the city of Brooklyn in order to conform our code to the updated classification and collective bargaining agreements. Uh, we are going to make a motion to uh, hold this item in abeyance this evening. There were several changes that were made and a couple more that still need to be made. And so Mr. Butler will work on those uh, and have those changes for us at the next meeting. And we will read those into the record uh, at that meeting. And then uh, the last ordinance we discussed was 2021-15. And this is enacting section 13507, the audit committee of the ordinance of the city of Brooklyn 
in order to codify a prior legislation creating the committee. Uh, previously, the committee was supposed to meet per the ordinance once a quarter. Uh, there was no need for that, nor was the, meet, the committee actually meeting that often. So this language will change that to meet at least once a year, and then as needed, uh, directed by the Finance Committee or the Chair of the Finance Committee. We also had a brief discussion uh, regarding um, online meetings going forward as far as uh, once we get back to our regularly scheduled meetings at City Hall, uh, there will be uh, legislation introduced more than likely at the next council meeting regarding allowing for these types of uh, remote meetings um, on an as needed basis for emergencies or uh, special meetings. Um, and of course the legislation will um, allow, uh, will require that all these meetings be um, uh, publicly announced and also that um, there'd be access just like these meetings are as well. And then um, that was it. That's all we discussed in the Committee of the Whole. Again, uh, that meeting does take place prior to all regularly scheduled council meetings immediately following the uh, finance meeting. And at this time, then we will have the reports of council. We begin this evening with Mrs. Grodick. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. I have a correction to make. Um, the mayor pointed out that on the planning commission, the first item was actually deferred. The total image solutions for the two canopy digital mountain signs for the gas station at 4295 was deferred because they were not um, in appearance. They thought our meeting was going to be another Zoom meeting. So if I can make that correction, thank you. Very good, thank you, sure. Um, Mrs. Balbeer mentioned some exciting things with her school report. It does seem like things are returning um, to maybe a little bit normal as we end our school year. And I just wanted to take a moment of personal pr privilege to recognize two longtime Brooklyn school employees and people who have deep, deep roots in Brooklyn. They will be retiring this year. Um, the first one is my dear friend and colleague, Mrs. Mary Ellen Ryan. Mrs. Ryan has lived the bulk of her life here in Brooklyn. She was a St. Thomas School girl and then a St. Thomas School teacher before joining the Brooklyn staff where she taught third grade and then most recently second grade. And um, I was able to work closely with her as a first grade team leader and then as her colleague on her second grade team. Um, I'd just like to recognize her 44 years in education, and uh, we all wish her a wonderful retirement, well-deserved. Um, and my second recognition is for our dear friend on council is Rob, Rob Kelber. Rob surprisingly announced his retirement, but then when you added up the years, he's been around a long, long time also. Rob taught, has taught at Brooklyn High School for 24 years, if you can believe that. Um, but he was able to add some extra time on because he was a, a Brooklyn Rec employee starting at the young age of 16. So altogether, he has 30 years of public service under his belt already. And so he is going to retire from being um, one of the strongest English teachers our English department has and, and has helped so many seniors get ready for college in his senior English class. So he will be missed, um, but he's, he's very excited about his next venture in life. And we all look forward to hearing more from the media adventures of Rob Kelber. So good luck to both of them and uh, well wishes. Uh, that's a lot of years in Brooklyn. 77, 74 total years of, of helping Brooklyn students and rec center employees and rec center participants. So um, we're losing some long, long time uh, workers here in Brooklyn, but best to both of them. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Grodick. Next up, Mrs. Ryan Shockey. Thank you. Keep Brooklyn Beautiful is kicking off our official community cleanups this Saturday from 9 till 11. We'll be meeting at Ridge Park Square by the medical building behind uh, by Texas Roadhouse and Marks over there. You can register online at volunteer.kab.org or by contacting myself or Councilman Sel Selcher. I can be reached by text or phone call at 440-391. 4832 or email at 
mryanshockey at brooklynohio.gov. We look forward to seeing new and returning faces this weekend. I also wanna take a moment to thank Lieutenant Eschweiler for putting together the training. Um, I don't know uh, how many saw, but it was also in the cleveland.com and uh, the Plain Dealer. Um, our police department took part in it and community leaders were invited to it last week. And um, I was able to take a day off of work and take part in the training with some of our police force and uh, Councilman Selhurst and our uh, superintendent of Brooklyn schools as well. And it was a great training about building community trust and respect. And I learned a lot and very value, uh, really valued it. So I wanna thank her for putting it together and for inviting community leaders. And that ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Shockey. Next up, Mr. Selhurst. Thank you. Um, looking at Sue's comments about Mary Ellen, she even goes further back. It's just kind of like a nice thing. Uh, she used to be a lifeguard up at the old pool. So it's, yeah, a lot of community service time. Uh, it's all good. Uh, as Meg mentioned, the cleanups we'll be doing, we'll try to hit Ridge Park Square. We'll try to get on the ridge, go up to bid off. Depends on the number of volunteers, if we can get to Knight's Commons and go south to the freeway ramps, et cetera. All depends on the number of volunteers we get. Uh, thank you also, as Meg mentioned, to Lieutenant Eschweiler. It was a good, interesting morning, uh, good discussions. Uh, hopefully some progress comes out of it. Uh, Bubba's Yard uh, will be held again Tuesday, May 25th in the parking lot at St. Elias. Starts officially at 3.30, but if they, they're set up and ready to get people taken care of, uh, they'll start a little bit earlier. Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce held their annual Taste of Brooklyn this year on May 1st. Last year, it did not happen due to COVID. This year was done a little bit with a twist, and there was a live performance on YouTube's, YouTube to individual who bought uh, tickets. Although the net proceeds weren't as much as in previous years, Still a little over $2,650 was able to be raised for future scholarships and grants. And also welcome our uh, newest police officer to our sworn in, uh, Patrolman Sidoti. Wish him a successful and safe career with Brooklyn. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Selhurst. Next up, Mrs. Pucci. Thank you, good evening. Um, I attended the NOACA presentation on their long range transportation plan which takes them um, to 2050, which sounds like a really long way off. Um, it was a very interesting presentation. And um, basically what they're working on now is um, planning activities as together we develop an equitable plan that will bridge access to land use, housing, jobs, health, and a better quality of life for all. So um, they did, seek broad input when they were developing the plan. And right now, this will be the final uh, window of time where any residents who are interested can provide some feedback. Um, if you're interested in either viewing the presentation online or downloading the plan, it's um, located at www.eneo2050.com and it's under draft plan. Um, there are numerous ways that people can provide feedback, email, US mail, phone, or their online portal. Um, their uh, email address is noaca, N-O-A-C-A, at M-P-O dot N-O-A-C-A dot org. And their phone number is 216-241-2414. And you know, one of the things, there was a lot of really good information, but one of the things that resonated with me was when they were talking about equity and some examples they gave, or, or one example they gave was regarding residents who rely on public transportation to get to their job. And when they started looking at this serious issue, because there's a very high percentage of people in Cleveland who do not have cars. And if you lived in certain neighborhoods, by taking public transportation to your job, you could get there in an average of 30 minutes. 
while if you lived in other neighborhoods, it would take you at least 83 minutes. So there was a lot of really interesting information. I would encourage people um, to check that out. Uh, last meeting, I announced um, the Safe Routes to School Bike Rodeo, which originally was scheduled for this past Saturday, May 8th. Unfortunately, there was a scheduling conflict and that had to be rescheduled. So the new date is Saturday, May 22nd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the school uh, parking lot. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, you have to pre-register for this because we are staggering when people arrive in order to have a COVID safe event. Um, there'll be, it's a bring your bike and helmet and there's a bicycle skills course. You can see different safety vehicles and say hello to our safety forces. There'll be a DJ, uh, preschool and kindergarten registration information, safety town information, and of course, um, the raffle to win a bike. One difference is, um, in addition to having to pre-register, pre-registering is how you will register for raffle tickets also. And instead of the raffle for the bikes to be held after the event, which would um, result in a, like too many people mingling too close together, the raffle is gonna be held after the event and then people will be notified. And um, the 22nd annual Big Creek Watershed Cleanup will be Saturday, June 5th, 9 to 12 noon. And the location in Brooklyn is behind our fire station at 8400 Memphis Avenue. Masks are required and social distancing practices will be observed. Please wear long sleeves and pants. Boots or work shoes are recommended, no open toed shoes. Bags and work gloves will be provided and children under 18 must have adult supervision. I wanted to share some information on um, a recycling project we have. I'm finishing up the certified public managers program at Cleveland State and one of the requirements is a capstone project. So I chose to address contamination in recycling, which is a serious issue for cities. Um, it has resulted in some cities having to curtail their recycling efforts, and in some cases, um, actually having to eliminate um, their recycling, curbside recycling, that is. Um, there are also a lot of cities who charge residents for trash removal, and I do not want to see that happen in Brooklyn. But unfortunately, this is resulting in um, not only operational differences, but also rising costs. So for example, in Brooklyn, we received a very nominal amount of money for our recyclables. And now starting in 2020, we now have to pay $52.75 a ton, which last year was about $37,000 to dispose of our recycling. So we received a grant from the Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District and we had a pre-audit of our recycling, which took place on April 27th. We took 1200, a 1,200-pound 1, sample of our recycling, and this was random. It was all dumped down at the garage. And we actually, though, the small group we had, we actually handled 2,400 pounds because we had to double handle everything. Once we took the random samples from the large pile of recycling that was dumped, had to put it on a table and then we had to sort it. And we sorted it into the different types of recyclable materials and then the different types of contamination. And I can tell you, it was really shocking. Um, we just received the report and I know Mr. Verb and I were a little surprised. We were expecting that we would do a little bit better but based on the sample, our recycling contamination rate is 38.1%. So the next phase of the project is going to be an education initiative. All residents will receive an oversized postcard, which will contain information on the issue, why it's important for us to address it, and a little bit more information about the project. So please pay special attention to this. We'll also have some email blasts and news release and social media posts. And then beginning June 14th, 
we're going to start monitoring for contamination and there will be a lot more information coming about that. At the end of an eight week program, we'll then have a post audit of the recycling and hopefully we'll see an improvement and the level of contamination in our recycling will be reduced. Um, I would like to thank Lieutenant Eschweiler. I was not able um, to get off work. I had some commitments that day that I could, or actually both days that I couldn't get out of. Um, so she sent me some of the information from the presentation. And congratulations to Mary Ellen Ryan. I know what a wonderful devoted teacher she has been for so very long in our community. And, you know, there are just so many people who you know adore her and really loved having her for a teacher. And also to Rob Kelber, um, I feel a special tug um, on his retirement. I actually have known him since he was a teenager at the rec center. I basically watched him grow up um, as he uh, had different positions of, with higher levels of responsibility um, through the time he worked at our rec center and all the innovative programs that he initiated there. Um, and he also has been very devoted to the education of our children in our community. I know he has you know, mentored a lot of students. He did a lot of extra things in having, um, teaching them media and of course the English, um, which is so very important as whether students go to college or go into the workforce. I know that he was a stickler with that and students who came out of his classes were very well prepared no matter what path they chose. Um, through some of the projects he worked on over the years, I was able to get to know some of his students. And you know, I can't tell you how many have said, oh, he was my favorite teacher, my favorite teacher in high school. And he really deeply cared about the students and the type of education they got. So I wish him all the best in his retirement. And I'm looking forward to hearing about the next chapters in his life. And that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tansky. Thank you. Good evening. There have been more and more complaints about the conditions of the sidewalks throughout our city. I just got a couple more calls tonight. I have addressed the sidewalk issue before and with the warmer months fast approaching, I would like to voice my concerns again. As more and more people are getting outside for recreation, we need to get these sidewalks up to par. As many of them have been heavily damaged by the large trees on the tree lawns, causing the sidewalks to buckle. This has become a major safety concern for many of our residents who use these sidewalks in their daily lives and they worry of tripping and falling. The Brooklyn Sidewalk Program, which I implemented a few years ago, helped resolve some of these issues. We need to come up with a resolution and get them fixed. So I'm asking the mayor, I know money's always the issue, if you can get with our director Verba because I know he has a long list and see what we can do with these sidewalks throughout the city, at least get our crew to start in some of the, especially some of the really bad sidewalks where they really dropped or lift and see if we can start leveling them off because putting asphalt and ramping them it, to me is just not the way to do it. We're gonna have to get down, take these slabs up cut these roots and lay those slabs down or reconcrete because um, some of these sidewalks are really, really in uh, really bad shape. So mayor, if you could, um, in your report, I'd appreciate it if we can address or where we can go with this. I would really, really appreciate it. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tansky. Uh, just one thing, I know it's a day late, but I did wanna wish all the, the mothers in uh, here on council, the mayor as well, and all those in the city of Brooklyn, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I know it's a day late, but still always good to honor our moms when we can. All right, and with that, I will turn it over to the mayor. Oh, Ron, you forgot Mary. <laughs> Mary, I skipped you, I'm so sorry. 
That's Happy okay. Mother's Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for so the Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Well, can I go? Yes, well, first absolutely. of all, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. I've been having computer issues, and uh, that's my fault. So I, I apologize. Go ahead. That's that's fine. I, I'd like to welcome also our new police officer, Francesco Sadati. Um, God bless him, protect him, and welcome to our wonderful police, uh, uh, Brooklyn Police Force. I'd also like to congratulate our longtime uh, residents, Denny and Diane Esper. They have a grandson named Zach Lothar, and um, he made it to the first start for the, uh, for the Baltimore Orioles. And he's a pitcher, he's a southpaw, and, um, and hopefully he'll have a successful career. But th they're so proud of him, and that's some of Brooklyn's own here. Um, I'd also like to uh, wish our wonderful teachers there at Brooklyn, uh, at our Brooklyn school. I don't think I know Miss um, Mary Ellen uh, uh, Ryan. I do know Robert Kelber. He comes from, um, you know, longtime Brooklyn residents or mom and dad. Uh, he's just such a wonderful young man. I, I always thought he was so young looking. He looked like student to me, but I, I better be quiet uh, being a teacher and everything. But uh, I wish him a, a happy retirement and nothing but, but well wishes for, for him and for uh, Mary Ellen. I'd also like to thank Councilwoman Pucci for all her research in this recycling program. It's just amazing how, Kathy, how you came up with all that and how you learned all that and you're able to share it with us. It's it, To me, it's fascinating and kind of, at some point, disappointing when you hear it. So uh, thank you. I'd like to thank you for that. And lastly, I had an issue, um, a phone call from a resident that was concerned about an animal issue. Now, this is the mating season for all those critters around our house, so, you know, the raccoons and all those uh, groundhogs and, and scary creatures that are out there and skunks and everything. Um, the city does not provide uh, traps. That was one of the calls I got. And um, in order to, um, to trap, you're better off calling our animal, and she's a wonderful woman, I did talk to her, our animal control uh, gal, and she's very helpful. She'll give you all the information and she'll recommend who can help you if you need to trap you know, somebody to come out and trap the animals around you. But don't take a chance and do that yourself. You're not allowed to do that. And you can reach her at 635-4291. And she'll eventually get back to you. She got back to me in a day or so, and she's very informative. So she'll be able to answer all your questions now with the mating season, with the skunks and the raccoons and everything. And, um, and that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And again, I apologize for that. Oh, that's all right. All right, Mary, go ahead. Thank you, Council President Van Kirk. I hope all of you mothers out there had a wonderful uh, Mother's Day. I know the weather wasn't that great, but it was a good day to cuddle up and watch a movie with your kids. And that's exactly what I did. So I uh, took advantage of the cold weather, even though I was desperately hoping it would be nicer. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be nicer in the couple weeks ahead. So some things to look forward to. I want to thank the chief and Lieutenant Snap and Eschweller for inviting me to the police training. Um, I think it was recapped pretty well by some council members, but you know, I think it was a great opportunity just to open dialogue. And that's what we can ask for from our officers to just be honest and hear honest feedback from the public. I know in the Thursday meeting that I was in, uh, hearing from a couple members of our business community public they had some terrific stories to give unique perspective coming from the other side and then vice versa hearing from the police officers. So uh, I look forward to that continued dialogue. And I think that dialogue is what helps make our community stronger and thank the police for all of the community policing that, that they've done over the last few years. Uh, as far as the sidewalks, uh, Mr. Tansky, I'm assuming that you reported the problem issues to Mr. Verba. Uh, I'm sure you're also aware that the city has been repairing sidewalks as part of our road program. Um, outside of that, are you recommending we change our ordinances of who's responsible for sidewalks? Because currently it is the residents. We have taken um, the opportunity to fix where our city tree caused the issues. I'm not sure if you're talking about sidewalks everywhere or just where the trees are. So I think uh, a further dialogue would be um, probably better offline. So we could actually talk about the extent of your complaints 
and the number. Um, I'm not aware that John's too far behind. He could correct me if I'm wrong on that. So um, maybe we could turn it over to him after I'm finished uh, with my report if he does not have a report. And then I sent city council an email today that RTA with their jack or their next gen um, is, are changing the uh, bus lines. We currently have two main lines through Brooklyn, the 45 and the 79, uh, and the numbers are changing. So, you know, this was a concern of mine when we met, but they're actually uh, adding frequency to the Ridge Road line. So it is not minimizing the lines. It's just making sure that they're servicing where the high density stops are. Uh, so that changes over on June 13th. I sent that out to Mary Jo, who will put a social media post and we'll make sure that we get that out. I'm sure frequent bus riders are well aware of this. Um, but for those of you who uh, um, maybe have taken a pause because of COVID, uh, just know that's coming down um, the loop in June. And then um, I want to congratulate Rob Kelber. Uh, I think this new city hall is coming just in time because we don't know what we would do without you taping our meetings. Um, and we're going to miss you uh, being here at all the council meetings. And I'll tell you personally, I want to be you when I grow up, um, get to retire in your your at your age and travel the world. Um, hearing from all of your adventures you have planned, I am so envious. So. Good luck, good luck to you and I wish you all the best and hopefully you'll come back to tape a couple meetings before you leave. And then the last thing I have for today is I wanna thank all the third graders from St. Thomas More and Heritage Christian for coming out and celebrating Arbor Day. I wanted to follow up, I received a bunch of thank you letters um, and all cute you know, letters from all of them but I wanted to read one of them to end off on a good note. Uh, dear Mayor Gallagher and the city of Brooklyn, thank you for inviting St. Thomas More to the Arbor Day celebration. It was really fun and I really liked the tree. Me and my parents planted it in a big bowl thing. I'm really happy we could do it during COVID-19. Even though we had to wear masks, it was really fun and I'll remember it even when I'm 40. Um, <laughs> You know, someone being 40, I really hope that this person remembers it when they're 40. I think it's a great experience uh, getting to see the kids again. Um, and just that idea of COVID and, and their memories are just going to be inundated at this particular time. It's just so nice to kind of get back and seeing people in person. And I really think they need this. So uh, it kind of brightened my day getting these thank you notes. And um, that's it. And that concludes my report. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Mr. Uh, Van Kirk, may, may I be recognized so I could follow up on something the mayor mentioned? Sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, regarding sidewalks, and, and I'm not referring to the sidewalk issues where the city's responsible because it was caused by the roots of a tree lawn tree, but regarding um, residents who may want to replace their sidewalks, I know something that um, other communities do is they take the addresses and then they pool um, those sidewalks into a public works contract. And that results in the resident actually paying quite a bit less because it's pooled in a project um, with the contractor already being here working on other things instead of individual residents trying to go out and you know, get some bids just on their own. So I'd like us to maybe look into that for maybe that's something we'd be able to do next year. Thank you. We, we actually have looked into that um, and John can get into some more details. We went through it with our engineer. Uh, the administrative burden of that becomes very great. And that's why we decided to pivot and start to do sidewalks as part of our road contract. So John, if you wanna add anything, um, I know uh, Dan Gerson does that in another city that he represents and they stopped because administrative burden of carrying that out just became too much. So um, doing that, that's why we decided to build in. And as we're doing our roads, we're uh, marking off sidewalk areas and taking care of them. Mr. Berber, do you want to add anything?
Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Verba. Oh, thank you. Uh, not, I mean, Mr. Tanskett called me last week, said there was, you know, he when he was out um, walking that he, he saw a lot of sidewalks that were not uh, up to par. I didn't actually receive any addresses. Um, usually there's like a, a two to four inch margin where then um, we'll put them on a list. Anything below that, um, we'll just kind of ramp. Um, right now, this past uh, spring, we've been inundated with working with the rec. We had to do a lot of work for the rec center. Um, we also had over 15 water openings that we have. We haven't even begun the concrete crew on working on our capital project at service garage. Um, and we only do have two guys, um, in our cement, on our cement crew. So, um, the mayor, uh, brought up a great plan to do the sidewalks as we do our street program. So we're kind of staying on top of that. I think last year we replaced over 120 sidewalks as part of the program. And this year we will continue to do that as well. Um, it's just going to take time and to prevent a trip hazard, we will, we usually ramp them until we can get to them. All right. Thank you, Mr. Verbo. At this time, we'll move on with our legislation for this evening. Uh, the first item on our agenda is resolution 2021-15. That is authorizing the marriage enter into a mutual aid agreement with the Cleveland Metro Parks Police Department. Are there any comments or questions on that? I'll make a motion that we adopt. Second. To adopt. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Resolution 2021-16, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with McBride Del Clarion for consultancy services related to studying and drafting provisions of the zoning code following the city's adoption of the master plan. And this is at a cost of up to exceed $94,000. Any comments or questions? Move to adapt. Second. To adapt. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Ed Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. The next two resolutions are on second reading. Resolutions 2021-17, authorizing the mayor to enter into a pass-through and sale purchase and development agreement with the Cuyahoga County Land Reutilization Corporation for the purchase of certain real property known as Apple Creek Drive, uh, a V slash L Apple Creek Drive, permanent parcel number 4317116 and declaring an emergency. Resolution 2021-18, authorizing the mayor to enter into a community recreation conservation project pass-through agreement with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Uh, I will now make a motion on ordinance 2021-14, repealing and amending various sections of the codified orders of the city of Brooklyn to conform the code to the city's updated classification plan and collective bargaining agreement. I will make a motion that we hold an abeyance until our next meeting. Second. To hold an abeyance, Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. All right, the next two resolutions are on first reading, but we hope to pass by suspension of the rules. Resolution 2021 19 for the resurfacing of Brook Park Road, State Route 17 from West Corporation Line near Chevy Boulevard to Ridge Road, half, the Brooklyn's half in the city of Brooklyn. Introduced by all suspend the rules. Second. Second. To suspend the rules, Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adapt, Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Resolution 2021-20, 
authorizing the mayor to enter into a joint improvement agreement between the municipalities of Brooklyn, Cleveland, Parma, and Brooklyn Heights for the resurfacing of Brook Park Road from West 130th to the I-480 eastbound ramps as part of ODOT's urban paving resurfacing program. Any comments or questions on this? Introduce, we all suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Sue Brodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Sue Brodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2021-15 is on first reading, enacting section 135.07 audit committee of the codified ordinance of the city of Brooklyn in order to codify prior legislation creating the, that committee. Then our last piece of legislation is ordinance 2021-16. This is on first reading, but we'll hope to pass by suspension of the rules. Approve the 2021 replacement pages to the Brooklyn codified ordinances and declaring an emergency. Are there any comments or questions regarding this ordinance? Introduced by all suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To, to adapt. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. All right, that concludes our agenda for this evening. Do anyone, does anyone on council, the mayor, and the directors have anything they need to add? Yeah, Ron, can I be recognized? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to get something cleared up on those sidewalks. Sidewalks that I'm mentioning are the ones that our city trees have lifted these slabs. That's the issue that, that's, that I have. Now, I understand when they do the roads, they're going to try to do some of these sidewalks. But there are areas, and I, and I will start writing heavy addresses down where I see them. Maybe not, I believe John said, four inches. They might be three or whatever it may be. It's just going to get worse. If a sidewalk is lifted two or three inches, that sidewalk is not going back down to an inch or leveling out. That sidewalk's going to get worse. And not only is it going to get worse, but those roots are heading to the sanitary sewers. So it's it's not it's just not one thing. That, and I know we got a contract with the county to clean those lines out, but every sidewalk we lift and we cut those roots and lay those things down, that's the less problems that the resident's going to have of those roots heading into their front yard, damaging other stuff. So it does more than just one. So I just want to clear that up that I'm only looking, and I know there's a lot of sidewalks that are decaying, but I understand it's on the residents. Um, on the residents' responsibility to get them sidewalks uh, redone, new concrete put in. But the um, lifting of those slabs is where I was um, emphasizing. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. To adjourn. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Thank you. All right, everyone, have a blessed evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.